to drop all the lava pieces until it does the long stream, in which case then you can go over. Once you're in here is where the real maze begins. All the areas look the same, they all have these platforms just a little bit to the right of the stairs. However, we have to go down four sets of the stairs and then go onto the platform in order to actually make it to the boss of the stage. Thankfully, we can tell that each set of stairs is a little bit different because the enemies that you face on it are different. We started off with those bird enemies and then we go to a set of skeletons. We're then going to have to contend with these bee enemies which can be really annoying. Then we have these pink balls that bounce around and fire other projectiles at us. And then we finish up with bats, but that's on the staircase that we're actually going to the platform. The bee enemies on the next set is definitely the hardest because there's a lot of them coming at you. If you have that little bit of a wave power-up from your sword, they aren't too bad because you can hit multiple ones with each sword strike. But they like the gather, and you may want to either just run quickly away from them, or wait for them to bunch up and then deliver your strikes to them. Here's where we have to deal with those bouncing pink balls that come around, and they do spit out projectiles, but thankfully they're not nearly as annoying as those fly enemies. Once over here, instead of going down the stairs, you're going to go up to the platform on the right. Thankfully, they give you their spring shoes at every set of stairs so that you can make it up here. You have to contend with, though, the dog and the guardian from the second level of the game. They're just the same exact battle as you fought before, so let the dog jump over your head back and forth and deliver strikes to it every time it jumps. The second guy is a little bit harder to contend with because he's a little bit more sporadic, but you should be able to defeat him once again before he destroys you. And thankfully, there's a shop before we actually fight the final boss. So if you need that health, you can stop by that shop use up your money because you're not going to need it after that. And it's time now for the final boss battles of the game. Right here, before the final boss battle of Chambers, we have to quickly go over to the right and this spiked wall is going to start falling from the ceiling. Quickly destroy the door to the right and go inside before the spike wall ends up crushing you. Once you're inside the room, it's now time for the actual boss. This boss is a real pain. Stay over to the left side. He's going to hover down a little bit, then go back away. He comes on screen once again, but you can't destroy him until he actually reveals his true face under the mask. He starts flying towards you and then will take away the mask and start actually attacking you with projectiles. That's going to be your big opportunity to deliver hits to him. When going away from him though, don't stay on one platform too long. Deliver your hits and then quickly get to the next platform. There's lots of platforms to jump to so you don't have to feel like you're going to run out. It takes a good amount of hits to defeat him and you have another boss coming up right after this so you want to conserve your health as much as possible. Once he starts exploding, you'll fall into the next boss battle. Once the pink demon rises up, rocks start falling from the ceiling. You have to attack him in that brain ball that we've been fighting all throughout the game. The best strategy is to hang close to him on the right side. Every time he opens his mouth, jump over his projectile and deliver a hit to the brain. The rocks fall faster and faster as the battle continues, and they can bounce up on you really quickly and cause you to get hit no matter what. So standing at the right spot is going to end up being crucial in order not to take too much damage. However, once a ceiling spot disappears completely, rocks can no longer fall from that spot, so that's a good thing. Once you've defeated him, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Conquest of the Crystal Palace.
So the ending ends up not being really spectacular by any means, and that's probably one of the few downsides that comes to this game. Once you get used to a little bit of jumping mechanics, there can be a little bit of trouble at the beginning. Overall, you have a very solid action platformer for the NES. It has awesome graphics and a great soundtrack, mixed up with some cool power-ups we usually didn't get to see during the NES era, especially the fact that you had a canine companion could actually help you out. Once the credits finish up, we get this great screenshot of our main character with the end written at the bottom. And with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.